Chihuahuas are the second most common dog breed found in U.S. animal shelters, only after the American Pit Bull Terrier. In 2015, 3,725 Chihuahuas were available for adoption in the United States alone. While this number may not be initially alarming, the Arizona Humane Society and the Maricopa County Animal Care and Control Center reported a combined total of 10,535 Chihuahuas in their facilities in 2013, 2,100 of which were euthanized. While there seems to be an identifiable reason pit bulls are high in shelters due to breed stereotypes, it is questioned why chihuahuas are such a close second to them. Many experts say that the film industry is to blame for this, along with the Paris Hilton effect, which presents this breed as a toy or cute accessory, leading to impulse buys rather than recognizing responsibility that comes along with owning an animal. There are, however, organizations dedicated to solving this problem, one of which is Chihuahua Rescue Indiana. Their website states, We are an all-volunteer organization dedicated to the rescue and adoption of the Chihuahua and Chihuahua Cross Canine. We strive to educate the public on the importance of being a responsible pet owner and spend a great deal of time and energy toward this endeavor. All of our pets are cared for in individual private homes as a family pet, and though we are not pet rehabilitators, we do our best to make the pets the best canine citizens possible. We believe that all Chihuahuas deserve a loving forever home with people committed to the care and keeping of the pet forever, and we do everything possible to ensure that the adoption is a lifelong commitment with the support of our people and its resources. We will not turn our back on any Chihuahua rescue pet. So I actually bought a Chihuahua from a breeder and um, going to pet stores, taking my Chihuahua with me, I ran into a Chihuahua Rescue. Um, it's Chihuahua Rescue of uh, Northwest Indiana based out of Crown Point. And talking to her, I already had knowledge of uh, raising a Chihuahua from a puppy to adulthood and he was very well behaved. So she asked me if I would be interested in starting to foster. Most of those were like from puppy mills or owner surrenders which is where a person doesn't want a dog anymore. Um, multiple reasons why sometimes people work too long, uh, sometimes people, they get dogs and not realize that they are work like a child. I mean, they have to go outside, they require medical care, they require food and water and attention and exercise. So a lot of times people don't realize they're just see a cute puppy in a window and they're like, oh, I'm gonna take this, you know, I want a puppy. And then the puppy turns into a dog and turns into a lot of work. And so a lot of times people are just like, this isn't for me. So they rescue or they surrender the dog to either a rescue, which is where um, the rescue, we keep the animals in our homes um, with our family and our pets, as opposed to a shelter where they're in kennels or cages um, uh, or that type of thing. So the dogs re usually react really well to being in that type of situation. Sometimes dogs come about into the rescue that come what I call for other fosters or I adopt them. So I had lost my first chihuahua which was a long haired uh, to liver cancer. So Pepper, which is here on my lap right now sleeping, is actually a Papillon. She came from a hoarder. She, it was from a lady that just, she thought she was doing good by going to the pet stores and buying the dogs that were in the pet store so they weren't in the pet store. So she thought she was doing a good thing, but then she got a little overwhelmed with the amount of dogs that she had. Uh, so Pepper, for the first six months of her life, she lived in a dog crate on puppy pads. Um, when we got her, she was not socialized. She um, had bad feet because she lived on soaking wet puppy pads um, filled with feces. So her whole bottom half was filled with feces and urine. Uh, her feet were so bad from being um, embedded with the uh, urine and feces and puppy pad debris that she actually started walking on her knuckles. So uh, we cleaned her up, we rehabbed her, and now um, she's a great dog. She reminds me of my long hair chihuahua, so we decided to keep her. Um, we have another rescue that is Cinnamon. So this is Cinnamon, and she is my longest foster that I've had so far that has stayed with us. 
um, when we got her, she was actually from a Salvation Army drop-in. Someone in the middle of summer thought that it was okay to put the dog in a drop-in. Uh, it was not. When we got her, she was literally bald. Um, her body had started to eat itself. So she was completely emaciated, which means she had like no muscle or fat any longer. She was literally um, skin and bones. She was approximately, they approximated at the vet, um, two to four years old. Um, due to the fact that she was in such poor health, um, she has bad knees. Um, her liver was affected. She had really bad high enzyme levels in her liver and her heartbeat was off. It gallops as opposed to beats. So um, she had to be on a special dog food diet. She had to take a liver pill that was um, one pill a day and it's $30 for 30 pills, so a dollar a day. And then um, she just needed completely rehab. She was very aggressive. She bit everyone that came in contact with her, including myself twice, um, until she met my son. And he is actually the one that started rehabbing her um, by getting in her hexagon pen and feeding her bologna and cheese. And then she became his best friend. So at the time, um, we knew because her body was so bad, for health reasons, we needed to get her spayed. So um, they did a special uh, spay where they kind of put her out for just a short time, did a really fast spay, and then brought her back quickly um, due to the fact that her body cannot process the anesthesia um, due to the liver and the bad heart. So we got her through that, but we were not able to put her through a prolonged uh, knee surgery that would fix her knees. So she has two gitchy knees in the back, Usually she holds one um, or both legs at the same time, kind of up, and then her joints in the front, because of so much malnourishment, um, sometimes the front legs will actually go in and out, but she usually pops them back in herself. Um, also from that, she was in such bad shape that most of her teeth had fallen out uh, rather quickly, uh, but now she has no teeth left. We've had her for 12 years. Um, we were told in the beginning that she would probably only live three to five years due to her poor condition of health, that her liver and her heart would probably give out um, much earlier than a normal expected chihuahua life. So she was two to four, we've had her for 12 years, so she is approximately 14 to 16 years old and she is still um, perfectly fine. She's a little high maintenance. She likes you to hold her as you see her tongue hangs out due to the fact that she has no teeth to hold them in. Um, she's a great little dog. She goes outside, she likes to burrow in a kennel. Um, but due to all of her health stuff, I didn't think it would be fair to adopt her out to someone. Um, so I took on the responsibility of keeping her. Uh, and through vet and everything, we stopped her on the liver pills because her liver stuff came back into uh, the realm it was supposed to be in. So she's lived now um, for probably 10 years um, without the liver pill, but I still keep her on a very high quality um, blue buffalo diet that um, is high in protein and um, she processes it very well. And she will not eat canned food even though she does not have teeth. She insists on the hard food, which is what she eats. Um, she just gums it apparently, so that's what she eats. And so we've had her for a very long time. And I have a feeling that we'll have her for a much longer time. <laughs> and this is Layla. She is one of my also uh, adopted out. I, um, she was one of the puppies that we raised. There were four in the litter. She was the only black one. And um, for whatever reason, black dogs and cats are always the last ones in shelters or rescues to get adopted. So I figured she would be um, harder to adopt out. She did brown up a little bit more and get some more whitener, so she's like a tri-color now. So she probably would have been a little easier. Um, she was very shy and standoffish. Um, she also was feisty, so she would bite. Uh, I would not have recommended her for um, a home with small children, uh, probably because she would bite them. Um, when people come over and she doesn't know them, if you reach too quickly, she will bite you and she will draw blood. So um, she fit in with my other dogs. They accepted her immediately as opposed to the other three in the litter. They um, were a little more standoffish of her, but she fit right in. So um, since we raised her from a puppy, we had decided that um, she fit in our pack. 
So um, we kept her. Uh, so far, all of my puppies or fosters have found forever homes. I haven't had any returned back to me. Um, I have always been like a lifeline if they have questions or concerns or problems, um, you know, they could always call me. So they were comfortable calling me. Uh, most of the times though, um, really no calls once we adopt a dog out. Um, we do a, an application process. Uh, we kind of check into the people and where they live to make sure that they've not, you know, adopted dogs and then gave them back or um, adopted dogs and um, taken them to their local shelter and dropped them off. Um, all of our dogs are microchipped within the rescue. Um, the chip is linked to the rescue as well as the foster or I mean as well as the adoptive parent. That way if the dog is lost um, or stolen or surrendered to a rescue um, or a shelter, they would scan the dog and see the chip and see that it's from our rescue. So um, sometimes we do get dogs back that way. Um, so far, luckily, I have not had any of my uh, foster or adopted out puppies um, come back to the rescue, um, to my knowledge at this point. Uh, I've been doing the rescue now for 12 years. Um, right now, I kind of have a full house. So um, I haven't really been doing a lot of fostering uh, right now due to the fact that I already have um, six dogs. I still go and help at um, events throughout the year. Uh, every like two or three months we're at PetSmart in Maryville, Indiana. Um, and PetSmart is really good. They actually uh, support adopting only, which is awesome. They don't sell puppies from inside the store. Um, also, we um, do other events uh, within our areas, and there is a portion of the Chihuahua Rescue out of Indianapolis, Indiana, that is like a sister partner uh, to the Crown Point uh, office. Uh, this is Zoe. She's another one of our uh, Forever Fosters. She came into the rescue from a lady who got her because she thought she would be a cute um, accessory. So she got her when she was a puppy. She had a purse and lots of clothes and little blingy things when we got her. Um, but the lady worked um, 10 hour days in Chicago and she lived here in Crown Point, Indiana and um, work all day and then come home. And uh, Zoe was kept in the kitchen with puppy pads and food and water and the lady decided that it was too much work for her. So she decided not to um, keep Zoe. So she surrendered her to the rescue. But there's so many dogs that are surrendered to rescues and to um, humane societies that if you can, it's best to give a dog a home that needs a home as opposed to going out and getting one. Uh, also, usually when you get a pet from a rescue or from a animal shelter, they are already fixed. They already have their shots. Um, it's a far less fee as opposed to spending thousands of dollars um, to buy a dog that's a purebred and then to turn around and spend um, an additional hundreds of dollars on um, getting them fixed so you don't have dogs going into heat or male dogs being aggressive. Um, and getting shots, it's kind of a good place to start. Uh, puppy mills are where people see the dogs as money. So they don't, they don't really care for the dogs. They usually don't have vet care. Um, they're usually minimally fed and watered. They're kept in, in horrible conditions. They usually stack crates on top of crates. Um, which means the dog on the tops, um, feces and urine is a lot of times dripping down um, on the pets below it. They're usually not groomed, so they have usually skin parasites, um, fleas and ticks, and a lot of times mange, um, because they're usually, they're usually just using them um, as a paycheck. So they go on the internet and they'll sell really cute puppies, um, you know, for five or six hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, sometimes with papers and sometimes without. Um, they sometimes will also breed um, brother to sister because they're just trying to get a quantity of puppies as opposed to a quality of puppy. So they don't worry about like degenerative diseases or um, the health or welfare because they just want to sell the puppies for money. Um, 
it's usually a horrible situation. There's usually hundreds and hundreds of dogs. A lot of times they're in so much um, bad health that lots of times they have to be euthanized humanely um, because you cannot um, undo some of the uh, health issues that's been done to them from living in those uh, squalor type positions. So. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of dogs across the United States that need homes. They're in rescues, they're in um, shelters, and you know, usually anywhere from some places do $35 to $50 for a dog, um, up to $200 depending on the dog in the area because you know, it's a lot of money that's invested in the rescues and getting their vet care. And when you get sick dogs and you try to save them, um, the vet bills are, are really high. So a lot of times we need to, even though, you know, you may know, oh, well, this dog was healthy, it was already fixed when it came to you, why would you charge an adoption fee? Well, because part of that adoption fee is maybe helping several other animals uh, as well. And um, so it's, it's really best if you can to go to a rescue or a shelter. You can still get purebred dogs. Um, these are all purebred. They're Chihuahua to Chihuahua. They just don't have papers. I don't show them. Um, so I don't need a show, you know, quality dog, but they make excellent house, you know, home pets. Um, and they're usually very thankful that they're in a caring and loving home. Dogs are loving, playful, lifelong companions, but require a lot of time, money, and responsibility. If you are interested in learning more about Chihuahua Rescue, visit them online at chihuahuarescuein.org. Or for other breeds, visit your local animal shelter and give a furry friend a forever home. Thank you.